Hello everyone, welcome back to Battle Brothers for Season 3 now, essentially. Uh, season 2 will still be releasing episodes, but unfortunately that's not really continuing for a reason I probably won't actually say right now, but uh, it'll become evident as time goes on. But I will still be releasing those episodes up until the end. Now then, today is the first day of Battle Brothers' actual release on Steam. And, um, I'm not gonna, act I was thinking about hitting tutorial videos, but I know exactly what this does, and this basically just brings you out to a Windows browser opening of a playlist of tutorial videos. So, we're not gonna watch any of those, it seems like. Oh no, these are all the same. Okay, never mind. Are there any new options? This is like the only game I ever play on 1080p. So that's nice that I could do that on something. We're gonna do Veteran, Random, Iron Man, and... Um... What will our company name be? Oh, are there new banners? Doesn't seem like it. I still wanna do this. So I did have a... Whoops, there should be, there should be an S here. I did have a campaign named after these guys twice in a row. The first one I'm not actually going to upload because it wasn't on Iron Man. And because it wasn't on Iron Man, I just quit out of the game. So I don't entirely know how much further I was on that save, but we're not going to do that. The second one ended up horrifically. So that's fantastic. But yeah, we are the Badlands Bannerman, named after one of my favorite zones in a certain MMORPG. We're gonna do random late game crisis, or crises if you prefer. And I really like the sun hand, like, because it's under a desert, so awesome. Okay, but we're gonna go ahead with that. It looks a lot like the Champion of Torm fist um, symbol from Dungeons and Dragons specifically Forgotten Realms, so that's cool. It all went wrong. Two days ago, the company was hired to track down Hogarth the Weasel and his band of raiders, but it was them who found you first. An ambush. Some joke about horses cut short by an arrow to the throat, arrows shooting in from everywhere and, no and nowhere. Men holler and scream, a great volume before death. As the hail subsides, you draw your weapon with the rest of the men, only to collapse to your knees. An arrow has punctured your side. You shout in pain. A harried glance sees them in charge without you to make a valiant last stand. Met in force as steel clashes with steel. You meet eyes with the captain. A last nod before his throat is cut. You're left in command now of what few men remain. Trembling in pain, you lean on your sword, and with all the will you can muster, slowly rise again. So we are going to do the tutorial, and I'm going to read this out just because it's new. <laughs> I mean, it's not new, new, it's pretty much the same, but, you know, we might as well just get the whole vanilla experience here. Does this actually... His armor must have been basically gone if he got hit with a male halberd on and did, I mean, died from that. But I guess he probably had, lit, uh, like, a lot of... I think he had, like, no hit points left. Anyways, let's begin. None of these guys have shields. Really? Well, okay, this will be an easy kill. Okay. Berthold the Merciless. We could flank around here, get a shot on him from above. Nice, shot him right in the arm. And now we're gonna stab him to death. We're gonna cut him to death. Okay, that was a fantastic starting fight in terms of loot. Yeah, we just got one axe. You're alive! You won. The adrenaline fades, and, and in its wake, you can't help but sink back in, in, sink back to the ground. Gritting your teeth, you snap the arrow's shaft. Your chest heaves. Pain for breath. Everything blurs. The company has been devastated, cut down to but a few men, and that bastard Hogarth the... And that bastard Hogarth, not Hogarth the Weasel, did justice to his name, fleeing like the weasel he is. What now, Captain? A voice says from behind. It's Gebhard who sits down beside you, betting his bloody axe on his legs. You turn to him to reply, but before you can answer, he continues. Bernard's dead. They slit his throat. He was a good man and a damn good leader, but all it took was one mistake. That makes you the one in charge now, don't it? Albrecht the dog. 
I might actually leave Albert the dog's name the same, because I know. I don't know, but I know of a Albrecht. Who, that's a really fitting nickname. Joins the two of you, still breathing heavily. Then Bert hold the merciless. I like how these guys all have titles. Then Bert hard. Then Bert hold the merciless. Okay. Um, I feel like this actually had more complete spelling in the past. I'm not sure. Save this. Save the ceremony and anointments for another day. Let's give them let's give the man a good burial and return to Lighter's home to collect our pay. The Weasel's men are slain after all. Besides the captain besides Captain, we ought to see to it that wound we we ought to see to that wound before we lose you too. Wouldn't want to leave Albrecht the dog in charge, right? Okay, this is definitely different. Yeah, I don't recall that last line at all. So that's cool. There's small differences in the very few pieces of dialogue there are in this game. What a sorry display it must be for onlookers as you arrive in Lighter's home. Home. Four bloodied and beaten mercenaries down on their luck. The men who hired the company days ago, Otto of, Otto of Lighter's home, no doubt expected you to return in a more glorious fashion. Still, he welcomes you to his house and offers bread and wine while a servant fetches a healer. A healer. Few words are exchanged except for the occasional grunt and wheeze as an elderly man with shaky hands tends your wounds. A pin pierces your skin, the first of many stitches to come. You grit your teeth till you think you hear one break. Otto of Lighter's Holm sits, sits beside you and asks if you took care of Hogarth. You shake your head. We killed his men, but the weasel eluded our blades in the end. The healer weaves around a glowing the healer the healer waves around a glowing fire poke, su suggesting he wants to push it into your wound. You nod and he does so. For a moment, that's all there is. You're not a man, but a pinch of fire, flesh from flame, a golem of pain. Also new there, by the way. Otto from Lighter's Home points you, hands you a goblet of wine. I don't know why I said points. You did well, Selsword. The brigands have been removed, though it is a shame. Though it is a shame that Hogarth still lives. We expect to get paid for this. Otto of Lighter's Home gas. Well, naturally, four hundred crowns is agreed upon. He gestures upon his, toward a servant who, who rushes to your side with a pay in hand. I wonder, may I make use of your services one more time? I'd very much like to end the headache that is Hogarth once and for all. And I would pay you again, of course. Another 400 crowns, shall we say? Now, I'm going to stop here really quickly in this narration. Doing this is almost 100% better than, like, just venturing on your own. Because 400, I think, is a larger payoff than I've seen in just unless you get lucky anyways, just randomly moving around and collecting contracts. Usually it's like 230 crowns. Anyways, moving along. Give heart scoffs and turns to drink more wine, but Bert hold the merciless stance to speak. Yes, the company is in ruin, but we will rebuild it. Without the Badlands bannermen, Gebhard would drink the crowns away and end up begging on the streets. And Elbrick the dog, by the gods, all we all know he'd go chasing the woman folk until one, stub until one stubbed stove stoved uh, his rotted head in. We need the Badlands Bannerman. It's all we have. What say you, Captain? Gephard burps and raises his cup to you. Elbert the dog playfully thumbs his nose and nods. Kill that bastard Hogart or not. It's up to you, Captain. Yep, let's do it. Otto of Lighter's home claps his hands in satisfaction. Excellent. My little birds will need some time to find where Hogart is hiding his hide now. In the meantime, I suggest you see about stocking up on supplies, so you, you'll be good and ready to go. You'll be good and ready to end this when the time comes. I shall see you in a few days' time, at the latest. As you leave Otto of Lighter's home's house and stand on the outskirts of Lighter's home, Berthold the Merciless speak, uh, seeks a word with you. We need more men, Captain. I know I give I know I gave a big speech back there, but bravado won't do shit. Shite. We need more warm bodies in the ranks. Figure we find good three men, buy them some decent weapons, and dress them in the best armor we can afford. The man pauses to glance around. I bet this Bodong town's got a desperate peasant or two looking for a new life. Or we could travel to Or we could travel to Walt Hain in, in, in the east. Them city folk aren't always as them city folk aren't as always as hardy as these country bumpkins. But we're more likely to find men with fighting experience stopping to rest there. Okay, let's do it. Well, there's no towns on the way there. It's literally just a city away. 
we could buy some furs here and just sell them immediately. I think that's a not a bad idea. The militia spear is slightly under its value, so I think that's a good purchase now. We could just repair the wooden shield, so I'm going to do that. We have no armor here at all. That sucks. And everything else here, not the greatest. We'll buy some food because we could do that now. I'm sorry, Janel the Goat, the Goatman. I, I can't resist recruiting someone with the Goatman in his name, or the Goatman, Goatman, whatever, Goatman, Goatman. Now this guy wants a lot of gold for a farmhand. That's a bit. Ragnar, that's actually pretty great. I wonder if this bio has anything to do with their stats. I don't think it does because this is uh, pretty much procedurally generated, but we'll see. No matter no matter the weather, a farm needs working. Ragnar hails from the outskirts of Tangware, where he drove plows and broke horses. Unpaid for his labor, he eventually abandoned the farm life. Don't let a simple past fool you. Ragnar could fit in with in could fit right in with any wrestler or fighter. It's a stupid idea to recruit him, but I did it anyways. Mainly because I wanted to do this. Okay, first of all. What, what do we got here? Uh, Vert Hold the Merciless. You're now gonna be Bart the Merciless. Gebhard is now gonna be gay. Um, hmm. This is gonna be Vibes. And Albert the dog is gonna be Albert the dog. Don Donbert the broken. You know, for being broken, you actually have two stars in melee. That's quite curious. Holy crap! This guy is potentially—he could grow to be really crazy, especially against undead. He has less health. Like I'm, pr I'm probably gonna give him Colossus. And every level, I'm going to be putting points into hit points, but that's what I usually do anyways. Ragnar. Besides this, which is extraordinarily high hit points, except for Vibes, who actually surpasses him by quite a bit, I'm not really seeing... I'm not seeing anything worthwhile. I don't know why I paid you that much. So yeah, you know, bio apparently means nothing. Janel the Goatman, huh? Uh, we'll leave your name the same. So, we do have a pitchfork. Maybe that's why he was so damn expensive, because of the pitchfork. I mean, that's not a bad thing to have right off the bat. We can just put him on the back line and suddenly, whoa, we have a back line fighter. People that start off with under, okay, this is my plan right here, all right? Everyone that does not have at least 50 melee skill, which is our new recruits, is going to have a Militia Spear because Militia Spears come with a 10% chance when you're thrusting, or that basic attack, let's call it. That sounds terrible otherwise. Um, to hit. And that's fantastic as far as I'm concerned. Our goal right now, our mini goal anyways, is to get some decent prices for these um, furs and then buy more stuff. We completed the requirement of recruiting three more men. As Walt Haynes' skyline appears on the horizon, Albert the dog seeks a word with you. Never been to Waldheim. Never been to Waldheim before, but I've been around ones that look around, that look a lot like it. Cities like this are great for selling goods, as all these prissy, pompous pricks. <laughs> okay, I, I am fairly certain they changed things, because I would remember if the word pricks was here. Pompous pricks love to have their goods delivered. With so many merchants, you can find almost everything you need, too. Keep an eye for keep, keep an eye out for bargains, and don't get swindled by them cutthroat merchants. Vibe sees fit to, oh, to add his own opinion of what you should do. If there's a good tavern, I say that's where we should go first. Nothing helps a man down on his luck more than a good pin. God knows we've earned it. We earned it. Albert the dog shakes his head. You say that every time we stop into town. You say that. You say that even when you're already drunk. Why are there so many different changes? I think the dialogue before was better. 
Oh, wow. This you, There's usually not a contract right next to your starting city, so that's quite interesting. Please buy these furs. Ooh. That's a profit. That is quite a profit, actually. Oh, boy. I'm buying that. Yep. I mean, we have to repair them, but I don't care. Because this armor is fantastic. As far as I'm... Now, we have an interesting... We have an in interesting opportunity with Ragnar the Red. And... Subsequently... Albert the Dog as well. I could do this. Give him a leather tunic, which is like what? Five less armor than the thick tunic, and leave him with the thick tunic. This is just to save money. We're gonna we need to buy helmets for them, of course, still or hats if we're poor. But I don't think we will be poor. It's more of a question now of can we find? Oh. Okay, we got some we got some nice stuff here. I think we need a wooden shield still, so this is nice that this is already repaired. Yeah, we do. Okay, frontliners get that. Vibes also gets one. Vibes should... Oh, boy. Okay, yeah, Vibes is getting um, one of the padded leathers. Bart the Merciless should be okay with this. We'll see, I guess. Really hoping I'm not gonna regret being cheap, but we'll see. We still have 895 gold. Hold on, does everyone have... Okay, spear, spear, axe. If we make a formation like this, we could potentially do a spear wall little maneuver there. Curious, curious, very curious. Now, my issue with the pitchfork is I feel like I've never actually killed anyone with it. I've just done damage to them. But, I mean, that's fine, right? Oh, Vibes has tough, okay. The perk or trait or whatever this is of tough. Okay, I, I say we go ahead and do this. I see Oma's... I want to try it with six men. I really do. There, uh, I wish there was an armor smith here or something. Hmm. Oh, I, we're going to streak land here. That sounds like a really wonderful place. Um. Oh, wow, a contract here as well. This is a fantastic starting location. Here we go. Well, we don't really need these now, but still. A nasal helmet is interesting. We could buy that. Um. Oh, wow, prices just jumped up here. That's, that's a bit much. I think I'll buy a padded surcoat for at least Ragnar. Because, I mean, he can still get hit from the back line. It'll just be harder to hit him. Let, let's buy... Let, we're gonna go... We're, we're gonna go all, all out. Now. 50... 40... Okay, alright. Got it. So, Ragnar... Um, you probably should have one of those. Because he, ha he doesn't have a shield to rely on. The same thing goes for Vibes, in that case. There we go. And Albert, sure, Thick Tunic should be perfectly fine. We have 448 gold left. Yeah, I think it's time. So, as we go along, um, this of course is a turn-based strategy game on a hex grid, not a grid grid. Um, I'll explain the mechanics as we go into this fight that's about to happen here. Usually I don't do six men here, I usually do um, seven, but oh well, I, I 
I want to try to do this without having any casualties. That's that's the big part here. Auto of Leiter's... It might be Leader's Home, actually, but whatever. Auto of Leader's Home is pacing back and forth when you find him. The healer who near... The healer who damn near killed you with a fire poke is standing nearby. He's picking chunks of dried blood out of his fingernails. Auto of Leader's Home claps his hands. Finally, you're here. I have good news. We got hold of one of Hogarth's former men. My good friend here had a nice little talk with the man, and now I know where Hogarth's licking his wounds. Licking his wounds. The healer clears his throat, splaying his fingers out like a maiden looking to paint them. He speaks as though he's identifying a disease he's about to excite. The brigand known as Hogarth is hiding in a small hut on the plains to the east of here. Based upon my most civil discussion with one of his men, Hogarth knows where the ba Hogarth knows the Badlands Bannerman is on his heel, and I've gathered more men since the last time you met him. Nodding, Otto a Leader's Home waves you off. Good luck, Sellsword. Good luck, Sellsword. Let's do it. Okay, they do have an archer. That's good to know. If you bandit, I'm, I'm guessing. Okay, so it's probably six on six. What it's not showing here is Hogarth the Weasel is also involved here. I'm not sure if he's considered a bandit thug because he would be remarkably geared for a bandit thug. But, um, yeah, let's begin. First actual fight. Oh, it's only five. Okay, wow. Why don't I do this every time then? We also start off with high ground vantage here. Let's let them come to us. We can have Elbrick the dog move over here and we'll get pelt them, pelt, pelt them from arrows over here. So... Oh god. So they can do that because the bow with bullseye anyways has an increased range, I believe. Yeah, in fact I know it does. And this is pretty much what you expect from a turn-based strategy game. Each character has up to nine action points. Moving takes up four, you typically or it takes up two more if you go to a higher elevation, or in this case, grassland. But I think snow is up to two, so you can't do so much, a I mean, you can only do a certain amount of actions, and each action costs action points. Certain weapons, except certain weapon attacks, consume more action points than other weapon attacks. With a light weapon or a one-handed weapon, you usually could do two attacks if you do not move. If you move, you'd only do one. The same applies pretty much, okay, they aren't moving at all. The same applies to heavy weapons, except it costs more action points to actually attack to begin with. Um, okay, this is not cool if they move in, because we're other- I mean, that's gonna- He- well, I think he actually moved into our range. I'm pretty sure Elbert the dog is a better shot than that guy. Okay. Now, in addition to action points, which of course, as far as I'm aware, is always a maximum of nine. Maybe you can get up upgrades for it later on. I've not seen any of that, so I am assuming you cannot. Hogarth the Weasel is here. Okay, okay, all right. When you strike someone, they have a chance to be severely wounded or get a wound like just what just happened. Hogarth the Weasel is actually fairly geared here. The only thing he doesn't have is... Let's create a spear wall here. We're sacrificing elevation advantage, but that should be okay. Vibes is pretty much essential in to, to deal with Hogarth here. The plan with Vibes is to move in one space and then... Now, there are special attacks, but they typically don't cost more AP than normal attacks. What they do cost more is fatigue. Every character has a certain amount of fatigue, or energy, let's call it, which would be displayed here. 67 is not terrible. It's not the best in the world either, but skills consume a hell of a lot of that. As does moving out to higher elevations and whatnot. Okay, usually they go around the spear wall, which they're still doing, obviously. Which, I'm not a fan of that. That's for damn certain. Okay, what do we do here? Um, let's move Ragnar off the, the upper ground a little bit. Now the unique thing 
I'm pretty sure this is unique um, in turn-based strategy games in general because I've not really seen this mechanic in other games, and I've, I've played a hell of a lot of turn-based uh, turn strategy games. Is this game effectively, I mean, this game has melee attack zones. If you go into melee range of someone, you cannot move out unless you avoid their attack. They get a free attack on you if you move at all, um, basically forcing them into melee with you. I believe the actual term for that is zone of control. But another way to think of that is attack of opportunities in standard RPG games, which a lot of RPG games do use that system. You moved into the spear wall. Okay, well, this is actually a terrible idea because I can split his shield right now and we can take Hogar down immediately. He, by far, is the biggest threat here as far as I'm aware. The archer may also be... Okay, I'm not a fan of this. Ouch. Okay. He's also... Okay, well... Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, not bad. We gotta assist... We, we gotta assist Ragnar here. Um, we could actually go for Hogart here. Of course, that wasn't a kill. We're gonna start taking hits. I can't do anything. Oh god, it's done. Damn it. Okay, well, that was very unfortunate. Hmm. Okay, so do we kill Hogart or do we kill the bandit thug? I think... Hogart wins because his turn was next anyway, so that means we have to deal with one less person attacking. Now, there's also a morale system on top of that. When allies die, or when enemies die, your morale is adjusted accordingly, as you might imagine. Okay, Donbert, go after this archer here. They also implemented in the final patch anyways a surround mechanic, or overwhelm, I think it's called. The more people you have surrounding one person, the more likely they're to have a negative resolve check. Basically, they have to do a resolve check every time an additional person surrounds them. So as more people are surrounding them, they get... they lose morale more and more. Basically, they need to hold their ground or else, or else bad stuff happens. Now, we can move over here and actually shoot at this thug like that, like so. Oh man, you blocked him. You blocked Vibes with that little buckler, huh? And you even hit Vibes, that's not cool. Well, that, that was the buck that, whoops, that's not who I meant to move with. Now, where is our friend here? And by friend, I mean person I'd love to shoot. He's probably way out of range right now, so. Yeah, we'll let him go if the prompt comes up. It's over. Okay, well, one loss is not terrible. We... Okay, Hogart lies dead in a pool of his own blood, skewered into a grotesque and panic pose. He didn't weasel his way into this one. You put a boot on his corpse and looked to your men. For the company, for the men who've fallen, Albert the dog spits on the dead man's face. Let's take this bastard's head and get back to Lighter's home. Well, he got one more, I guess. Albert the dog joins your side. Got a moment, Captain? You nod for him to speak his mind. The battle's left some gear. The battle's left some gear worse for wear, and some men got a good nicking too. We could patch up both man and equipment while marching, but it's a lot faster to set down and do it. Of course, if we make camp, it should be we should be wary of ambushes. A campfire in these parts can be seen from every which way. The company returns to Lighter's home as victors. Their heads held high. He well, their he their hair. <laughs> Their heads held much higher this time. The Badlands, bannermen, the Badlands Bannermen are not the size they once were, but they're still a force to be reckoned with as Hogarth learned in his final moments. You carry his head in the sack that you empty in front of Otto the li of, home, of Leader's Home's feet. He jumps back, 
but the healer quickly picks up this head, stares at it, and nods. Otto of Leader's home approaches the brigand's bloodied face and eyes it carefully. Yes, yes, that's his ugly mug, all right. Servants, pay this man for his pay this man his money. Coin in hand, you raise your voice to the men. As long as there is blood coursing through our veins, as long as we can hold sword and shield, there shall stand our company. All through the realm, people will know the Badlands Bannermen. The men cheer. Bart the Merciless puts his hands on your shoulder, hand on it, your shoulder. You did well, Captain. No matter where you lead us, the men will follow you as brothers in battle. Except for Ragnar. Sorry, Ragnar. Uh, Eberhard the Mountain. 150 is pretty cheap. Ooh, lucky 777. Gold that we, I, that we have, I mean. Ooh, man, this guy is an intense tank. Never mind, that's range defense, not melee defense. We could still potentially make him into something, though. So I'm not going to discard him quite yet. Also, that would just be a waste of money at this point. Um... We also got a cloth roll, which is kind of useless because that doesn't sell that much. Okay, vibes. The Hogart Killer. Level up, level up. Now, two hit points or four hit uh, four fatigue. I think I might actually do... Four fatigue. Yeah? Sure, let's go with fatigue. And as for his perk, so okay, so these are traits, these are perks, got it. I'm going to give him nine lives. Okay. So the good thing about where we are right now is Walt Hain has a contract for us. And now we're pretty much in the open world, such as it is. And we could do whatever we want. For the most part. There is something I want to try. And I won't actually do it. But I will try it in our playthrough at some point. Because I am very curious about this. For now though. I think we take a bit of a break. Um, I'll see you on the next episode. My name is Krendis. If you liked um, the video. Feel free to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Helps me out a lot. Definitely. Um, and if you didn't. I'm sorry. But other than that, we'll be continuing with narration on prompts as they come along, just because I want to. But um, other than that, this is Battle Brothers. And let's let's hope for a much longer campaign now. I think I think we could finally make it past 100 days, if not to 200 days, if not to a full year. I don't know. I think we can make it an endgame, though, because I definitely want to see what one of these endgame crises are about. And maybe we'll die during it. I don't know. But with that said, everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.